It's now time for a devotional thought. This morning, it will be brought to us by Pastor Mark Finley. What's more important, your character or your reputation? What is character? What is reputation? Our reputation is the perception that others have of us. Our reputation has to do with others, what others think about us. When other people hear your name, what do they think about? What thoughts come into their mind? Our character is who we really are. Our character has to do with not what others think we are, but what we actually are. Our character is the most important thing. Now, I've heard people say, well, don't worry about your reputation, just worry about your character. What's more important in a car, to have brakes or gas? What's more important in a, to, to have in a car? Is it to, um, to be able for the car to go or the car to stop? You say, that's a false dichotomy. And it, it's in a tr sense true. It's a false dichotomy with character and reputation. God desires us to have a positive reputation so that we can positively influence people. But that reputation is never to be achieved at the expense of character. If you have a solid character that knows God, that loves God, that's committed to blessing other people, that will create a positive reputation. In Proverbs chapter 22, the proverb talks to us about reputation. It says in Proverbs 22 verse 1, a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, loving favor rather than silver and gold. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. If we make a commitment to unselfishly serve like Jesus served, he will take care of our reputation. During the early days of the Salvation Army, William Booth and his associates were bitterly attacked by the press, by religious leaders and government leaders alike. Whenever his son Bramwell showed Booth a newspaper attack, the general would simply reply, now, son, now, Bramwell, 50 years from now, it will matter very little indeed how these people treated us. It will matter a great deal how we deal with the work of God. William Booth knew that the most important thing in life is doing God's will. The most important thing in life is a knowledge of God and allowing the Holy Spirit to create with us an unselfish, kind character. Think about the Salvation Army today just for a moment. They have a sterling reputation. I know when my dad was growing up, he had no father that he knew of, brought up in very poverty-stricken homes in New York City, places like Hell's Kitchen and uh, the Harlem in, in New York. And his dad was brought up there he had a rough time. He was brought up in the Great Depression in the United States, 1928, 29, 30, 31, 32. Those were very difficult years. People were unemployed in the United States, hard to get work. They were standing in long bread lines to get bread just to survive. And it was cold in New York City, but the Salvation Army provided for my father. Um, clothing during that time. They provided a coat for him, which he didn't have. And, and they developed a sterling reputation for unselfish sacrificial service. The most important thing in life is a knowledge of Christ, a relationship with him, a commitment to do his work, to reflect his character and follow his leading. And if that is our decision, he will take care of our reputation. Our reputations are not nearly as important as our characters. And if we're committed to do God's will, he's going to guard our reputations. If we're committed to do his will, he will care for our reputations. In the book of Matthew, chapter 20, we have a story of a mother. And we shouldn't blame this mom too much. She's a story of a mom that wants the best for her children. She's a story of a mom who wants to see her children have position, have honor, have a good reputation. So 
in Matthew chapter 20, verse 20, this mother of Zebedee's sons, James and John, comes to Jesus with her sons. And she kneels before him and she says, and Jesus says to her, what do you want? And she says, grant that these two sons of mine may sit one on your right hand and the other on your left in your kingdom. See, she thinks that Jesus is gonna come into his kingdom. And she thinks, I know what I want. I want my sons to have a place of honor. I want them to have a place of, of position, a place of authority. I want their reputation to be one that they're sitting, one in Christ's left hand, one in Christ's right hand. That's what I want. And Jesus shocks her. He says, a little later in the chapter, verse 25, he calls all of his disciples to himself. He has a lesson he wants to teach them. He says, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. Those that are great exercise authority over them. They have this great reputation. But it's not going to be so among you, verse 26. Whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. Whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for many. Jesus came not to give his time, but to give his life. He came to reveal the character of God. He touched the eyes of the blind and they were opened. Touched the ears of the deaf and they were unstopped. Touched the withered man's arm and it was healed. Touched legs that were paralyzed and they leaped and walked again with new life. Forgave the sin of the woman caught in adultery. Broke the bread and fed 5,000. What is it about this Christ that draws all men to him today. What is it that gives him such a positive reputation? It's his character. It's his life of service. And he hangs on that cross with nails through his hands and blood running down his wrists and blood running from the temples, from the crown of thorns upon his head, matting in his beard and dripping at the stone at the foot of the cross. He dies there bearing your sins and mine. He dies with the guilt of sin, the condemnation of sin. He who knew no sin took sin upon himself for us. What is it that causes songs to be sung about him? What is it that causes artists to paint pictures of him? What is it that causes books to be written about Christ. Why? What has given him such a positive reputation that echoes and re-echoes down the ages? Here's what it is. Jesus was more concerned about his character than his reputation. And Jesus knew that if he lived a life of self-sacrificial service, a life of love and kindness and compassion, that God would take care of his reputation. And that happened. What about you? Proverbs says a good name is better than riches. How do you achieve a good name? By striving for it, by seeking first place, by trying to get as much power as you can to gain a good reputation. Tell God you want a character of loving service and he'll take care of your reputation. <music>